In this video, you will learn step by step how to create this 3D camera fly through animation in DaVinci Resolve. And in the process, we will use the 3D system. So you will learn how to work with a 3D camera and also how to animate it. So let's jump straight into Resolve and get started. So what we need for this is just a screenshot of our timeline and then, yeah, basically composite it and animate it. So we will start with a fusion composition, which you can find here in your toolbox let's drag it onto the timeline then make sure your playhead is on the clip and then switch to the fusion page all right right now we can obviously not see anything but let's import our screenshot which i have here this is what it looks like in my case and let's connect it to the media out node and before we do anything in 3d we want to modify this screenshot a bit so that it looks yeah just a bit nicer so the first thing is we want to remove the background. To do this, we will close the media pool so we can have a clear overview and then add an HSL here. And if you have this icon selected, you can just click the background and it will make it transparent. So right now it's looking good, but it's a bit short. So we will duplicate the timeline and yeah, just line them up three times so that we have a much longer timeline where we can do the animation. So let's start with a transform node here and decrease the scale of the timeline a bit and move it to the left like this. And then let's add a duplicate node and increase the copies to three. And this won't change anything directly, but if you increase the offset, you will see that we can drag out these copies of the timeline. So let's zoom in a little bit here and adjust the offset so that the gap is not too obvious. Something like this, yeah, this will work. And that's the basic setup for the timeline. So now let's add the 3D nodes. The first node is a 3D camera, this one. So let's add it here. Then we need a merge 3D, this one, and also a renderer. So we can yeah, render the 3D image. And now it's important to connect them in the right order. So connect the camera to the merge 3D node and then connect the merge 3D to the 3D renderer. And now we need to integrate this whole thing into our existing node tree. So let's make some space here and add an image plane node. And what this will do is basically make the 2D image of the timeline a 3D image plane, so we can use it in the 3D system and also yeah, move it around and position it. So let's add an image plane 3D here and disconnect the media out here. And from here, we just want to connect the image plane to the merge 3D and the renderer to the media out so that everything that is being rendered is also being previewed. Also, let's rearrange it a bit so that we have a clean workspace like this. Now we can't see anything, but that's not a problem. This is just because we can't see the timeline yet on the camera. To fix this, make sure that you're here in the double preview and then click this left dot on the merge 3D and this will open the preview of the 3D scene here on the left. And as you can see, we have our camera, but also our timeline. And the issue right now is that the camera is just looking through the timeline because the timeline is basically behind the camera. But if we drag the camera back a bit, you can already see that we can see the timeline here. So what we want to do is reposition the timeline first so that we basically create a track where we can slide over with the camera and then animate the camera. To position the timeline, let's go here in the transform section to the rotation and then rotate it by minus 90 degrees on the x-axis so that it's flat on the ground and then rotate it by 90 degrees on the y-axis so that it yes, faces the same direction as our camera. Now the camera can't see it anymore and that's because they're both perfectly horizontal to fix this, just drag up the camera a little bit and there you go. And now we, before we animate the camera, we want to modify it a bit 
and here you can choose your own settings and angles but this is what I like and what works for me. Here we're first going to change the angle of view from 19 to 130 which is super wide and then the focal length you can play around or test out. I just put it to 2.5 and that's already it. And the problem we're having now is that the timeline is way too small. So let's go to the image plane 3D and increase the scale a lot. And let's make it even bigger. Let's move the camera up more like this. And let's also bring the camera back a bit, something like this. All right. Yeah, this looks pretty decent. So let's go to the start of our composition and first animate the fly movement of the camera just on the horizontal level and this is going to be the Z axis so let's keyframe it put the keyframe there then let it play for a couple of seconds something like here then create another one and what we can do now is either just increase this value right here or use the arrows here in the preview window and just move it all the way to the end basically like this and if we, if we play it back now we get this really nice animation all right so that's the fly movement and now we want to make it a bit more dynamic so what i'm going to do first is animate a roll so for this we will just change this set axis here but not on the image plane but on the camera sorry here and you can see that if we rotate it here we yeah do a roll like on a, in a fighter chat or an FPV drone. So let's go a couple frames forward, create our first keyframe, then go to this point, create another keyframe, and then increase this value all the way to 90. And as you can see now, we have this, this roll movement. It's not smooth yet, but we will fix this later. And another thing I want to add is the effect of basically turning backwards. So we also need to rotate the camera on the Y axis here, as you can see, to switch our direction basically. So let's go to this point here, create a keyframe, go a bit forward, and then make it like this. And this is what it looks like. Yeah, you can already get a rough vision of what we are going for, but now we want to make it smooth. So let's open the spline editor and select the rotations right here. So the first thing we're going to do is select all of them and press F to just make them already more flat. And what we're going to do then, go to zero to the first frame here and then disable the Y rotation first and hold down option and drag this point to the left here. And this one also. And now we already have a much smoother movement around this axis. And I just see that here we're actually a bit too close to the timeline and we're not seeing the entire thing. So let's quickly just increase the distance a bit and then we have a clean animation. All right, so this is our first part and then around here we want to start the second rotation movement. So let's enable this Y rotation keyframes, also drag this one to the left like this and then we already have something that looks a bit better, you see. All right, so now I will fine tune this animation a bit and for this it's basically just a trial and error thing. So first I want to switch the rotation of the z-axis back to the start or so that we're leaving the same way we entered. So let's put a keyframe with a value of zero, select it and press F and now we've got this movement where we look down onto the timeline as we leave it. First, let's select this keyframe, move it to the left and make it a lot smoother. For this, I just use the handles 
All right, and this is what we've got. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. So what we're gonna do now is just add a little bit of spice with some simple effects. The first thing is that we're gonna add motion blur and we will do this on the 3D renderer. So go to the settings and then just turn on motion blur and increase the quality to 10. And if you've been wondering why the timeline has been such a low resolution all the time and I've not said anything, it's because the motion blur is gonna, yeah, blur it out anyway. And as you can see, we don't need high resolution footage for this. So this is the first effect. Then the second effect is a soft glow, which we will add here after the duplicate node. So just search for soft glow. And then we will decrease the gain a bit to one, let's say. And you can see this makes quite a difference and yeah, just makes it look cooler. And if we now go back to the edit page, we will need some time to pre-render the entire thing because it's of course pretty resource heavy, but I will quickly wait for this to render and then show you the final image. All right, so the preview is rendered. So let's play it back. And yeah, it looks pretty nice. And the cool thing is that you can also put it on top of something. So here I'm actually rendering the video for today. And yeah, I can basically make this <laughs> go into my mouth. So I eat the timeline. <laughs> yeah, no, but jokes aside, you can put anything below it. So the background is fully transparent and you can add more effects and backgrounds and yeah, create a really cool animation. But that's it for this video. And I hope you learned something and that you now have a better understanding of the whole 3D world in DaVinci Resolve. So thank you for watching. If you have any feedback or questions, just put it down in the comments and make sure to subscribe if you're new and I'll see you soon.